Hi, I'm Claire. I'm on the primates and small mammals team here at Marwell, and I'm going to talk to you about the Simon Gibbons. And let's meet them. Here they are. So we've got Luang, who's here. He's the dad. Luang's 31 years old. We've got Simone. This is Simone. She's also 31 years old. And she's the mum. And Rosh is the youngest son here. He's a bit of a cheeky boy. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Hailbop here. Hailbop's 19 and Rosh is 15. So you can see this. If you look close up, they have got like individual features. So Luang's got his sort of broad nose here. Hailbop's quite a small gibbon. And Rosh has got his sort of bit of a slightly different hairdo. He's quite big, with big broad arms. So is it quite normal for them to live like this in a family, Claire? Yeah, it's perfectly normal for them to live in a family group. Um, these guys have been together all their lives. Um, Luang and Simone have been together 25 years now, so that is perfectly normal for them to live in monogamous pairs. But on occasion in the wild, they will sometimes go off of other gibbons also. So, Can you show us what you're feeding them? Yeah, so I've got a few treats in here. I've got some peanuts and sweet corn, which is their favourite. But this is their sort of main diet. Nice and healthy. Yeah, so it's basically a mixture of vegetables. Um, in the morning we'll feed them a special pellet, which is like a leaf eater pellet, specially form formulated for primates. Um, and in the afternoon we'll give them, well, this mixture of vegetables, um, which we kind of change depending on how much they eat, which can sort of vary throughout the year. And you're standing a, a good distance away from them, um, away from the outside of the enclosure there. And would you normally feed them like this outside the enclosure as opposed to going inside? Yeah, that's right. So we don't go in with the gibbons. We've never gone in with them. Um, they're very intelligent. So if we need to do anything with them, they'll come over to us and we do do bits of training here with them. So um, there's never really any need for us to go in with them. It's also the fact that they are very strong and as you can see, they've got big long arms. So potentially they could cause us some damage if they wanted to. So we kind of respect them and stay out of their way. So when it's not lunchtime or dinner time, what are these guys normally getting up to in their enclosure? <laughs> so we like to give them bits of enrichment. So obviously they'll be looking through that and finding things to do. We've also got lots of um, high ropes and swings up here so that they can go high and, oh, gosh, being cheeky. <laughs> Um, and they'll spend time foraging, especially sometimes we put enrichment like down here on the floor so they'll forage through and look for bugs because we also give them bugs and we'll try and, it rush, we'll try and um, make it as exciting for them as possible basically. And Claire, you work with lots of different primates and small mammals here, yeah. don't you? What's good about working with the Simon Gibbons? Well, for one, they're ultra friendly. They're, um, as you can see, they're really intelligent, so we get to do loads of them. As I say, I, I do some training with these guys, so that's definitely one of my favourite things here. Um, they've all got their individual personalities, so yeah, we get to spend a, a lot of time with them. And sort of, not hands-on with them, but we get to spend time sort of interacting with them, which is more so than some other animals, so yeah, they're my, they're my favourite. Look at enjoying a bit of is that sweet potato? Yeah, that's sweet potato. So you don't get too much of that, it gets a lot of leafy greens. Um, in the wild, they'd eat a lot of fruits and uh, sort of young, fresh leaves and shoots, but they'll also eat bugs. That's why we complement their diet with some bugs here. And we also get a few nuts, which I've got a couple in here for them as well. And what's lovely to hear working here at the zoo is when they sing. Can oh, you yeah, tell us definitely. about that? Yeah, so in the wild most of them would sing every day and have been able to sing really loud through the forest. They have a throat sack, I don't know if you can see on just under Luang's throat there. Oh, he's put his head down. <laughs> Typical. So they have there a throat is. sack which actually inflates to the side of their head um, and this enables them to project their voice and make sort of like loud resonating calls through the forest. So that's really interesting to see when they're actually so you can pretty much hear it through most of the park when they do sing. It's a really loud it's, noise, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's loud, but it's lovely. <laughs> but they wouldn't do it now, obviously, when they're feeding. No, not right now. It would most likely be in the morning um, when they first get up. And yeah, so sometimes they'll go right up to the top 
up there or I'll be inside the house and yeah, you can hear it pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Do you have any other cool facts for us, Claire, about these amazing creatures, the gibbons? Uh, the Siamangs are the largest of all the gibbons, so they're in their own genus and yeah, they've got the big huge black fur like that, so they can weigh up to 13, 14 kilos. Um, so they are pretty good, a bit big. Um, and they're a lesser ape as well, so they are, you can see, really intelligent. So, yeah. Just hear them crunching away there from the nuts. <laughs> and throwing it all on the floor. And now that we are in winter, the sort of coldest time of year, are you still feeding them the same diet or does it change depending on the season? Yeah, well, we feed them the same diet throughout the year, but the amount that we feed them can change because in the summer, when there tends to be uh, fresher leaves and shoots, they'll go out and the, they'll feed on that themselves and grab it through outside. So it tends to reduce their intake of food. So we'll reduce that a little bit then. And then in the winter, when all the leaves have dropped, um, we'll increase their food a little bit. So give them a few more bugs and a few more leafy greens. We're getting yeah. lots of love for our gibbons on this um, Facebook <laughs> Live video, Claire. And a question from M. Campbell-Wills. Do they pair for life? Do they make for life for gibbons? Uh, generally, they do. Generally, they are monogamous. Um, in the wilds, we'll have groups where they are paired for life, like these two, obviously, because they're in here, they've been together for life. But they're a little bit like humans. On occasions, they will go off with other gibbons. But the general rule is, yeah. <laughs> Claire, thank you for showing us the wonderful gibbons on day three of 12 days of Marwell. You're welcome. And we'll let these guys carry on with their lunch in peace.